Support me by giving this video a like, subscribe to my channel, check out my Patreon, or become a channel member using the join button below. Hello once again everyone, I am playing with Mui with another video game playthrough. This time, it's Kirby's Epic Yarn for the... Wait for it... The Nintendo Wii! Yay! Everybody cheer, breathe a huge sigh of relief, playing with Mui is finally doing more Nintendo Wii content. It's about friggin' time. So... I think that this is a playthrough that everybody was expecting for a very long time. Finally getting into it. Um, this is a game that, honestly, I have plan I had planned to do a playthrough on for quite some time. Uh, and again, am finally now getting around to it. Um, so, to start off here, as I make a new game, uh, we've got some expository cutscene intro video type stuff. So let's go ahead and listen to that. Welcome to Dreamland, a kingdom famous for peace and quiet. It's the perfect little land, if you like that sort of thing. Lately, there have been rumors of a caped sorcerer going around turning people into yarn. That's right, yarn. One day, Kirby saw his favorite food, a bright red tomato, on top of a bush. Down the hatch, but when Kirby tried to eat it, a caped sorcerer appeared. My name is... Hey, what are you doing? Stop that! No, that's my magic metamato. Kirby gulped the metamato right down. Just then, a white sock around the sorcerer's neck began to glow. Then it sucked Kirby up. Grass feels funny, Kirby thought. It feels like pants. And to Kirby's surprise, he saw that his entire body was made out of yarn. Then he saw a yarn monster chasing a blue yarn boy. Somebody help me! Kirby tried to swallow the monster up, but the air went right through his body. Kirby wondered what he should do. Suddenly, Kirby transformed into a car. He drove away with the boy and left the monster behind to eat his dust. Apparently, that strange metamato gave Kirby the power to seamlessly transform into a car and who knows what else. Okay, so there was a lot to unpack from that, from that little video. Uh, first of all, that sorcerer dude was very rude. Kirby was just trying to eat. And uh, dude used his magic powers on him and pulled him into this yarn world or patch land, whatever it's called. Um, the, for, I love how like the moment Kirby gets pulled into patch land, uh, he sees this guy getting attacked. <laughs> so that was awfully convenient. Uh, and also, hmm, Kirby turns into a car. Now where did I hear that one recently? Yes, of course, I'm doing this playthrough and this commentary post the release of Kirby and the new game that just came out. It, you know, the fancy one that is called uh, The Forgotten Land. Yes, I totally didn't just have to Google it, I swear. So yeah, so this is the uh, the main hub area. So this is kind of where just you kind of learn the basics. And also, uh, there's like, yeah, there's like in a little apartment thing, haha, <laughs> spoiler, uh, where you eventually move into. Um, but yeah, we'll get to there eventually. Um, also, I love how I say spoilers as if I didn't already use this video as an April Fool's last freaking year. <sighs> I know, I'm I'm the worst. Um, so yeah, uh, full disclosure, it's been a long time since I recorded this, so um, I don't 100% remember everything that I do here. Um, the idea here is that Kirby has like the you know his whip uh, is like the main attack. Uh, you want to get, you want to try to get as many beads as possible in order to get um, as much of a bonus as you can at the end of the stage, I believe. Um, yeah. So now, yeah, now I'm at one third. So yeah, now I have like the bronze medal or whatever. 
Um, yeah, and, and as you can see, Kirby has a number of different transformations where he doesn't need to suck up anything. He just he just transforms into them because he can. Because it's Kirby. You know, you're not you just you don't question it. That's it. Um, so yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, that's right. Yeah, and there's like these little treasure chests and. Oh yeah, there's there's things that'll have like a little red um, pull tab to just kind of indicate that this is something that you can grab. Um, there are also little treasures and things. I believe was what that thing I just picked up was that chandelier, um, and I believe that those are things that you can decorate your house with or your apartment. Sorry, goodness me, we wouldn't want to get anything wrong in this playthrough now, would we? Uh, yeah. So this parachute ability is extremely useful. And now we're going to pull the entire background, which, again, you know, it, uh, especially for the time, I feel like this was an innovative style of, of gameplay, you know, where it was kind of... This was before Wooly World, Yoshi's Wooly World, if and I recall correctly. And, uh, yeah, this whole sort of, like, yarn idea. Although, even though Yoshi's Story kind of used a similar sort of thing, I, it just it wasn't the same as this. Um... Where where uh, Kirby is literally yarn. Oh, that's right. And then there's music that you can unlock for. Oh, I think it, there's like a BGM thing uh, somewhere in the hub area. You can listen to music. Did I? Oh, I got the best thingy, I guess. Yes, those. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's ex, that's for extra beads, I believe. Which I don't need because I already got the gold medal. So there you go. Happy time dance time, and we are done. Yeah. All right. Okay. So one of the big reasons why I wanted to do the playthrough for this game is because this music has music, or this game music, I absolutely adore. I have just totally been in love with the music for this game for over a decade now. Also, we've got another little cutscene here, so let's all listen. Thanks for your help, the blue yarn boy said. Not that I needed it. I'm Prince Fluff. Ever since Yin Yarn the Sorcerer ripped Patchland into seven pieces, you just can't go anywhere without running into these horrible... But Fluff was interrupted when they were attacked by a huge three-eyed blob of yarn. Ew, gross, stop it! But before the blob could eat Prince Fluff, Kirby transformed and smashed it to smithereens in a most spectacular fashion. Among the little blob bits, there was a shimmering piece of spiraling yarn. That's it! That's the magic yarn, Fluff exclaimed. This was what Prince Fluff had been looking for. Yin Yarn had stolen the magic yarn from Patchland. The yarn weaved its way into the fabric of the kingdom and stitched two pieces of patchland together. What about the other pieces? I've got to find the rest of them. Kirby, always happy to help, decided to help his friend recover the missing pieces. And the two began their journey to stitch patchland back together. All right, uh, I got to admit, I, you know, as I was watching that, I, I kind of chuckled at with uh, Kirby kind of flapping his arms up and down like that. I thought that was adorable. All righty, so now uh, we talk to the uh, guy who is uh, a pretty upstanding landlord. Well, I don't, oh, okay, I, I guess I'm just, I was like, what am I doing? I, I guess I'm just messing with the background. <laughs> Yeah, this sort of upstanding landlord guy who Prince Fluff knows and will let us rent, I guess, apartment 101. Lord Kirby. Yeah, so. Dom Wool. Alright. <laughs> he calls him Lord Kirby. Alrighty, so. Oh, Quilty Court is the name of this uh, hotel, I guess. Although I think it wasn't it, is it apartment 101 or 102? Oh yeah, okay. This isn't. Oh, this isn't the the one I'm thinking of. Yeah. So there's um apartment 102 
has the music that I just love. Like, I just love Apartment 102's theme. It's such a nice song. Uh, yeah, so now we get into the basics of furnishing the place. It's sort of Animal Crossing-esque. Um, and by that I mean the sort of the older Animal Crossings, where you kind of just place stuff down, and then you can kind of maneuver it into place where you want them to go. Um, I don't think it has a function other than just, you know, to decorate and maybe kill some time. Uh, yeah, so this is, this was the idea here. Um, now, yeah, you can point the Wii Remote at the TV to move the uh, cursor around to move stuff, and I don't remember what I'm doing here. Ah, okay, there we go. Okay. Yeah, so I'm actually, as you can see, I am actually legitimately playing this on the Wii with the Wii Remote. So, here we go, using the Wii Remote, you're just kind of, yeah, there we go. It's not really attached to the top of the screen there, but, uh. I, I love how I noticed that at the time, too. I was like, wait a minute, that's not all the way up there. Okay, now we got that fancy throne from the... Yeah, those were the two things that we just unlocked from the first stage. We've got wallpaper. Okay. I don't really, yeah, I'm like kind of clicking through this and I don't... Oh, I guess this is kind of like, oh, these are... The sort of sub uh, sub um, I was gonna say subdivisions, but that doesn't really make sense. Uh, the sort of sub menus for each of the wallpaper types. I guess I have to. I, I don't, yeah, I don't really know what I'm doing here. Uh, okay, great. So while I'm kind of doing this and I guess trying to figure it out, uh, I'm gonna read a little bit of info because hey, I haven't done that in a very long time. So this game uh, was released in, uh, where are we looking at here? Uh, October 2010 for Japan and North America, February 2011 for Australia and Europe. Um, the game follows Kirby who has been transformed into yarn and sent to Patch World, or Patchland, a world made completely of fabric. Oh, and that reminds me, I was going to mention the thing that Prince Fluff was talking about with that sort of magical glowing yarn, and that sort of stitches the world together. And by stitching that first um, piece of land together with the, the area that we're in right now, we unlock World 1, Grassland. Which, again, th this is such good music. It's perfect. Yep, I've heard this song about a thousand times. Um... God, what 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 is that meme where the where the guy is just like okay, you know, it's just like mm, perfect. I can't remember. It's like the the guy is like it was wasn't it? It was um the uh Prince's new groove or whatever. Oh my god, I can't even remember now. Oh god. <laughs> oh, right now I have to look this up. Oh, I found it. It's the uh. Okay, never mind. Anyway, uh, so yeah, so this is stage one. This is so this is the actual first stage of the game. Again, the first pfft, the first area. <laughs> Look, he's just falling over. The uh, first area was again just sort of a um, an introductory sort of uh, thing. You know, just kind of get you uh, familiarized with the controls, and <laughs> it just bumped into him. Uh, as well as you know. Um, uh, some of the mechanics and whatnot uh, that you're going to be working with. So yeah, once again we pull down the background. Hey, we got another uh, piece of uh, furniture here. Um, I'm I'm, st I'm still trying to look for this friggin' oh it's the AOK -okay sign meme. <laughs> the Emperor's new groove. That was it. <laughs> when the sun hits just right, that's what it was called. Okay, anyway, so I was way too much time on that. Um, so I'm going to be collecting these beads. Um, so yeah, uh, he must help Prince Fluff by collecting seven pieces of magic yarn that are used to stitch Patchland back together in order to stop the game's antagonist, Yin Yarn. Kirby's Epic Yarn utilizes a unique craft-based visual style. The game's characters and environments consist entirely of yarn, fabric, and other craft materials. Unlike most games in the Kirby series, Kirby is unable to inhale or fly, instead relying on the ability to morph into other objects such as a parachute, a car, and a submarine, as well as other larger objects 
such as a tank, which we will see very shortly, uh, and a steam train. Well, that one I'm not familiar with, uh, at least at the moment. <laughs> Uh, there was a... Oh, th this was it. I was trying to get to this uh, particular portion of info which I read, which I thought was kind of interesting. The third game developed by Good Feel in tandem with Nintendo Kirby's Epic Yarn was originally posed by Madoka Yamauchi, who came up with the idea of a world of yarn as a video game. It began development as Kaito, or Kaito no Fluff, a game starring Prince Fluff as the main protagonist before the starring character was eventually switched to Kirby. I thought that was interesting. It, it kind of, you know, it reminds me of, um, um, uh, what, what's it, Star Fox Adventures, where it was an initially, what was the game called? It was like Adventure Planet or something? Now I gotta look that up too. Excuse me one moment. <laughs> well, uh, you know, because the, just, the gameplay is just so unimportant to talk about, am I right? Yeah, here it is. Star Fox Adventures, uh. Development. Oh, Dinosaur Planet. I'm sorry. Why did I think it was called Adventure Planet? Such a generic sounding name. But yeah, so yeah, it was a, uh, Dinosaur Planet. And yeah, I think Crystal was supposed to be like the actual main character. And then, yeah, they decided, you know what, well, let's just make it a Star Fox game instead. This is similar, where, you know, it was just like, hey, well, let's create this sort of new original IP. Uh, no, never mind. Let's just make it a Kirby game. <laughs> Also, that cloud's face is really creeping me out. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God! So, yeah, I don't know if it actually happened because I was kind of maybe sort of tabbed out to uh, read some stuff. Uh, but you can get hit in this game, surprisingly. Um, you can't die, as far as I remember, but you can get hit, and you... Well, once you get hit, you just lose, you know, a bunch of beads, um, which is sort of similar in mechanics, I guess, to Super Mario Odyssey, where, you know, you didn't really have lives in that game, you just, like, lost ten coins whenever you died. Um, so it kind of... The game is, is... You know, you could argue, which I won't, that it's sort of an easy game, but the thing that really makes it challenging is trying to collect everything in the game, which I will be doing. As well as getting all of the, uh, you know, the gold medals in each of the stages, which I will also be doing. So, yeah, with that added uh, challenge, makes it quite a bit more difficult. <laughs> I am really lost right now. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute, how do I go back down? I want to go back down, please. Oh, yeah, that's why I was trying, okay, I was trying to get to the other side, okay. I was like, wait, why... That's because there was a blockade in the way. I was like, wait, why am I doing that? Anyway, yeah, there... I feel like some of the obstacles in the game are a little bit confusing. It doesn't really telegraph it too well that, like, hey, this thing is going to stop you from moving. Oh, look, at they were in love. Uh, those two little waddledees, and I just m straight up murdered them. Wait, what? Oh, this... Okay, so this is the tank portion. <clears throat> Now, this is one of the things that I do remember recording, because I remember getting incredibly salty over this. Now, you have these, um, flying dudes. I do not remember what their names are, but they are, uh, old-school Kirby enemies. And again, their, their names, um, escape me right now. Um, the problem is they have all these, yeah, they, all these, these, like, bombs and missiles. Now, the missiles take out a ton of beads, and I got hit way more times than I would have liked by these guys. Um, yeah, needless to say, I was not a big fan. Yeah, it's, there were a couple of times where it just seemed like it was maybe a little unfair that I got hit, or maybe I should not have gotten hit by that. Um... Yeah, that, that's a little... Yeah, that right there! Right there! That doesn't look like I should have gotten hit. Because I just dodged another missile as I was standing in the exact same place. But I got hit the second time around, so that made no sense to me. Yeah, this is just super, super annoying. Oh, and now I cannot hit this guy because he's too low down. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yikes! 
Oh, that is not fun to watch. Oh, and there goes one of my uh, sort of star beads. Um, yeah, like the, the beads are kind of like, you know, depending on how many they'll give you, they'll be, you know, sort of bigger and, oh my god. And uh, more fancy looking, like, you know, these beads, which I believe... How much did they give you? 50? No, oh, I just got hit. So I was, I was going to say, oh, let me see how much this one star bead gives me, and then it just kind of... Everything just got messed up because I got hit. And this is the end of the portion right here. <laughs> I don't know what that was. And I don't know why I tried to go back, honestly. I should have just said, get me out. That one, I got the third tier again. Very nice. All right, not bad, not bad. Although that tank portion was very bad, very bad. <laughs> I just, I don't know if that's sort of a common thing for people to get hit a thousand times during that tank portion. Or if that was just me being a terrible player, but I just remember that tank portion being not a lot of fun. Not a lot of fun at all. Alrighty, so we have the butterfly patch. Um, what do I, I'm trying to, I think, oh, I think you need, yeah, that's right, you need to collect, yes, that's it. You need to collect the patches and that'll open up new stages. I was gonna say, oh, I, uh, I initially, I thought it was like, oh yeah, you had to complete all three stages and then get the patches and then that unlocks sort of like the boss battle for that world, but no, you need the patch from um, uh, like the previous level to unlock the next one. I love these little animations, they're so beautiful. Anyway, that's going to be it for this part of the Kirby's Epic Yarn playthrough. Join me in part two. We'll be moving on into the flower fields and hopefully not screwing up as much as in the tank portion section. See you all next time. A huge thank you to my monthly supporters who help make this video possible. Joel, Colin, Miggy Mouse, Tiberia, Evan, Boo Games, and Top Sauce.